We're bobcat hunting. Come with me. We will be seeing the elusive big Swede and the bobcat here shortly. There he is. Be careful not to startle him. He's got the grapple. Now look what you did, you irritated him. Now he's, he's mad, he's rooting out trees. Am I safe in the wooded area? I didn't even see you. You, should, you know, I've been thinking about that we the were, whole time. We were sneaking up I on really you. I really don't want someone to ever do that. Does that kill you? <laughs> You'll be in the burn pile. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's like everything, it takes way longer to get off the yard than ever expected. But I'm glad to see you've made some progress here. Yeah, it's slow, it's dirty, but I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of little trees. So we're ripping down a grove for a landlord here. And it's just a small one. That side has its own obstacles. We've removed all the trees over there, but there's massive rock piles, massive rock piles that need to be buried. And this side, is all little buckthorn trees that are tedious, yeah. very tedious. I've kind of gotten into some trees about yay big. Yeah. I'm derooted with this thing. I can't believe it. I heard you bogging it really bad. Yeah, it's when everything, I got out of the everything it's got to push a tree over. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know if you want to come into this clearing and get some of the big ones out of the way or what. Just stand back. I laid one down on Dad. Friday, laid it right on the bobcat roof. Nice. He's sitting there. I'm like, what are you doing? Move! And he's just looking around pretty soon. I thought it was going to clear him. I was just trying to scare him, and here it didn't clear him. Yeah, yeah. Dad said it was really loud when it what's hit he, the roof. What's he doing? He was supposed to come out here. He's sweating, laboring, cleaning out a shed. A shed? The hog barn. Someone's going to come and remove it piece by piece. So dad's getting our property out of it. Yeah. So one would think you'd bring your lunch pail with, with cool refreshments and stuff. No, he's got his crock pot in there. Yeah. Hold on though. It's worth it. I've been snacking already. I couldn't wait for it to warm up. But then, yeah, don't pay any attention to the labels. That's so I make sure I know what to eat. That's bacon wrapped chicken and potatoes. It smells like brown sugar. Yeah, there's a brown sugar glaze on it. There's nothing healthy about it, but it's <laughs> delicious. <laughs> you know what I had? Cauliflower bites and rice. You know, that's how I stayed so lean. Yeah, that sounds horrible. It wasn't bad. So he's lipping off and says, I, I was going to take them all out by myself because you guys weren't showing up. And I said, I'd like to see you take that tree down. So stand back. It ain't going to work. That's what this thing's for. And it is sure fun. It's like addicting actually, ripping trees out. Especially after this spring with all the tree damage and sticks we've had to pick up out of fields. I'm just not in the best mood to look at trees right now. That there pile though, that is big. That is gonna burn hot. We'll probably let it sit a while. We wanna move the excavator here maybe after today. We'll come back to this site later, let it dry a little bit. And here is the rock pile. Look at this thing. It's probably, oh, I'd say 80 to 100 feet long by about 30 feet wide, and about four, four to five feet tall. Wow, that is gonna be a process to bury that. And there are some big mamma jammas here. Look at this one. Big Stone County for you. 
And that's burning weed. You don't want to touch that. That's ouchy, ouchy, itchy. So it is currently July 18th. It is unbelievable how hot it's been the last few days. And we, we look at the neighbor has some tasseling corn just in the shelter belt. We might have corn yet this year. This stuff was in pretty, pretty early though. Anyways, uh, it's next 10 days is gonna be very hot and it's looking like no rain and the corn's already starting to roll up protecting itself from the heat and also lack of moisture. So we'll see what the next 10 days does, but we're gonna need rain very shortly with nothing in the forecast. So be what it'll be, I guess. Let's go have some fun. I love this job. So this one looks like the good first victim here. Where are we going? Can't see. Let's uh, see what this one. So basically, the excavator is pretty powerful, so I can normally just tip them right over and the roots come out. It's better to take them down and not break them off from the roots, otherwise the roots really, you gotta use the leverage of the tree to tip them over. Works the best. So sometimes you gotta dig around the uh, base of the tree to loosen the roots first. This one might, might be needing that. It is to the size that it could be a challenge. And if the excavator can't lift the whole tree, then you gotta break all the little branches off and try to size it more so, which gets messy, which is why the bobcat is here with the MDS bucket, and he's also taking out all this small little buckthorn. Working good. Oh, I think we got a chance here. Let's get my running gear in position. Here we go, here we go, it's happening. Yes! So I like to get the tree roots, or the root base, as light as possible, get the dirt off of it, and I also don't want dirt in the pile that we're going to try and burn. That's heavy. the whole thing. Woo! We're tipping, we're tipping, we're tipping. Oh! She's got to keep her tight to the cab. Center of gravity to the middle.
on. We were just getting going. What happened? That's been going. Did you break the same fitting off that Dad uh, did? It might be. It might be the exact same. Oh, I think it's the other one. Oh, I can see you can't see. Yeah. Turn the windshield wiper on to get the hydraulic hose oil. Okay, how do I get them hoses off then? You just push and panic and can't run the engine with these on. There's pressure there all the time? I guess so. I guess so. A little bit of flow. Because <laughs> as I turn it over, it's... Oh, boy. Well, maybe you won't need me back here. <laughs> You're doing such a good job. Look at how clean it is. It's as good as he sweeps his house. I had it clean, but now I kind of get more sticks there from you throwing it down. It actually works pretty nice. You sit over there and pile Take the trees them. up, and I come over here and bust hydraulics. Yeah, it was working so well until it wasn't. It was a good 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's looking like Eric is back. Only took him a couple hours. He must have been eating and then took a nap. Pile's getting bigger and it's getting way more open. So the plan is there's some big cottonwood trees. I'll show them, show you them later. I'm not gonna even attempt them. They're grown into the road, so I'd have to remove some of the road to get the roots out, and it would just be a mess. And they're along the edge of the field, so it'll be what it'll be. Uh, I guess. Five minute break. Five minute break, it's a mandatory one. You need all your hands to operate this machine. On top of that, the engine keeps getting really warm and I cleaned the radiator off and we did power wash it before, well, before we started the bend project. So I don't really know why that's running so hot. Maybe you should look into that. It could also be to do with the outside temperature. My air conditioner has froze up so now it's getting very hot very very hot and dad just called well you've been running her pretty hard and hot maybe it's time to shut it down it's like 4 30. I want to get done I want to get done so grove removal I've done tons of it in my life or career uh, when I was 16 I believe is when we bought this machine so 10 years ago we bought this machine used uh, Dad and Randy had purchased the 110 acre field with a six acre grove in there and we had updated our previous excavator to this one with the hydraulic thumb and that was my summer job all summer long all by myself removing grove. So I've done a lot of it but this ain't so bad here other than that these massive trees I'm not even like I said I'm not even going to attempt it because right along the road here so to get these trees out of here I'd have to dig way out into the road to break the roots and then once they're down then what I can't even I took one out that was probably like this one here this lonely one right here took that out and it took me like an hour to get it broke apart I'd break all the limbs off of it carry them all the way and then push it couldn't lift it push it to the pile so the worst part about it is they're cottonwood trees and they're the ones I hate the worst because they're so brittle they break off in a 50 mile an hour wind and the whole 200 yards is full of cottonwood branches and that's what all of these are but I'd need something bigger than that to work with these I'm afraid. So we're just going to leave these 10 or 11 of them stand I guess. It's not that big of a deal it ain't an obstacle it's along the edge of the field so is what it is normally what I do when I get to a grove like this with these big trees like this one here this is just ridiculously massive I bet that's probably five feet thick trunk there is I'll work my way in to the biggest tree and then I'll start a pile on top of them so I'll tip them over because I know I can't move it I'll tip it over and then start piling on top of it. And then once it burns up, it, it's virtually all gone. And then you just bury the stump. But not really in this case with this many of them. And this stuff here is something you gotta be very careful not to get wrapped in your track. It comes out pretty good. Grab it with the thumb and lift it out. 
ball it up, mix it in with some trees. It, it goes pretty good, but I've had it. Uh, you do it one time, and then every time you move, you start to watch when you know you're around barbed wire because it wrapped itself all around the house, all up in the track, and it took me like two and a half hours to nipper it out of the track system, which was a nightmare. So there's an art to it. A lot of learning to do. You gotta be careful, it is a very dangerous job. But it's fun, the danger makes it fun, actually. Oh, another day, another sunny, beautiful day. Time to get some fuel on the excavator. Eric's fixed up, cleaning up. I think Dad's gonna come with the payloader, help out a little bit this after for, for a couple hours to get this project wrapped up, hopefully. Get that stick, Eric. This is insane. I love that payloader. I couldn't even uh, lift it with the excavator and that thing just manhandling it. Woo! Unreal. I broke all the top branches off to make it somewhat lighter, but that's a big one. Should we point out how clean Eric is doing? Look at this. He's got it so clean. It's beautiful. Well, we finished up the trees and then just magically this giant hole here showed up. Only took a few hours to dig. Look at this guy. He's, I think, sick of bouncing around in that. How you doing? I should go. Are you sick? Oh, yeah. Ah! Get back! Where's the cross and bones? Everywhere. What do you got? I don't know. It hurts the top. Sore throat? It hurts the knee. Oh yeah. Stay away from me. Well that payloader didn't work worth the hoop, so I'm gonna try this. Okay, I can come and kind of drag and pull. I really hope the hole's big enough, but I don't think it's gonna be. I'm just so sick of just scoop, dump, scoop, dump for what, three hours now? You want to ride in this and drive around and <laughs> this is all you do the whole day? Uh, no, he's pretending to be sick. He's just trying to get out of work. They're on to me. <laughs> I don't know how many of you guys, oh my gosh, just sat on that. I don't know how many of you guys have ever buried a rock pile before, but it is very abusive on equipment and it's very tedious because you try not to get dirt, but you want to get the rocks, you want to can save whole space. It's, it's just, I'd rather rip out trees, let's just say that. Any suggestions where I should start? No? Me either. going quite well. The skid loader, we didn't have that the last time that we buried a 
rock pile. And it's very, very handy and delicate. Just kind of pulling it away, throwing the big rocks in, combing them out, and he pushes them in. It's going better than I expected. Those big boys, though, think of this is an old rock pile, very old, all hand picked. Besides, obviously, the big ones probably were tracked or hauled in with maybe a backhoe or something. But there's a lot of horrible days of work in that pile, I'll guarantee you that. And just like that, rock pile's gone in the hole. Luckily, the hole was big enough, not, not too big. We still can poke a couple other things in there. I think we'll put some ashes and tree roots in whenever we burn that pile. But we're going to leave it just like this. I also, this is where the rock pile was. I dug all the black dirt off of it sloppily. But I dug the black dirt off because you got to bury the clay. You can't just obviously fill your holes up with rocks. Now you got that clay pile. What are you going to do? Well, you pack in what fits back in the hole. Then you dig the black dirt off, put the clay in, cover it back up with black dirt. It's, works pretty good, it's just time consuming. Kind of like all of this whole project. But we got her done. We're gonna load the hoe up now and head for home. And got a couple other excavating projects that we need to do. So we're gonna put this one on hold for now. This did turn out beautiful though. I am very satisfied with this job. It's obviously not completed, but it turned out gorgeous. The nice thing about this payloader is we can use it to lower the trailer down. So we don't have to bring a tractor here. The hydraulics are extremely fast, so you gotta be kinda careful. Barely use the lever. Alright guys, thanks for watching, appreciate it, we'll see you in the next video.